So we're at Stonehenge again, once more, this time for Winter Solstice 2016. In the Winter Solstice, that is the special day for Stonehenge. You know, if you're interested in Stonehenge, you've got to be here, really. Because the summer solstice obviously attracts much bigger crowds on the longest day, but you're saying this is more important. I think, it, without doubt, that it's the Winter Solstice is important. It's very hard to tell when the days are getting shorter when in the middle of the summer. In the middle of the winter, the sun's disappearing rapidly each day. Every day gets shorter and shorter, and you get really worried that the sun's going to disappear. Um, you do the magic stuff, you give people presents, and the sun starts coming back. The sun is reborn, and the days start getting longer, and we've got hope again. It's all like we've been celebrating Christmas here for 5,000 years. And you have got a, a theory that this is the way the stones were aligned. It was for this particular um, day rather than for the summer solstice. Oh, absolutely. It, I think it's well recognised by anyone who studies Stonehenge that the winter solstice sunset this evening, the sun sets right through the middle of the monument. There's a little tiny gap and the, the sun, big red orb, comes down, little tiny hole, disappears. It's quite magical, little flash. I, I have my own theory because I spotted some stones that line up to the sunrise. So if the sun was, was rising, we'd see it in line with some stones here. So I think they celebrated the whole day here. And you are a bit worried too about the future of sunrises and sunsets at Stonehenge because of the proposed tunnel that will take the A303 out of this landscape. Tell us why you're worried. Isn't that good news? A tunnel taking busy road away from Stone Monument. I mean, it'd be lovely to get rid of the, the A303 as it is. We can see it, probably even hear it at the moment, just behind us. What I'm worried about is the favoured uh, option for the tunnel is they're putting the entrance just over the hill from Stonehenge. And so they're saying it's going to be out of view, but it won't be. There'll be lights and all the glow we see with road junctions. And this happens to be exactly in line with the winter solstice sunset. So as I was just saying about the sun coming down into a dark, Little, little red flash and then a completely dark sky, that would be gone. There will be that neon or LED glow. Um, at the moment it's the most spectacular dark sun um, sky and dark skies are so important and when it's the most iconic view of the most iconic monument to do anything that threatens it is just cultural vandalism. And as we speak, Tim, I can hear the drums picking up a pace. I can hear that accordion player. I think, even though we can't really see much of sunshine, it is nearly sunrise, isn't it? Tell us about this moment in the ceremonies. Um, this is a moment where we're celebrating that the sun's being reborn. Um, last night the sun died, and it's um, so. This is where everything's worked, the sun starts coming back, and we think, wow, it's great. And so in, in that circle, what's going on? As we speak, the drums, I can hear the yeah. hoots, I can hear them getting excited. Um, I'm not a druid, so I'm not com completely sure what they're doing, but they are celebrating. They're saying prayers for peace, for harmony, and all the good things, and hoping that we're going to have another great year. And thank goodness that the days are going to get longer then. Starts off with just seconds, but they're going to get longer from now on. So I'm just here with Tim Dore and uh, he's got interviewed for BBC Radio but he said something very interesting about some stones and about some alignments on this winter solstice. So Tim, uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. What it is, is we're standing here, we're waiting for the winter solstice sunrise. Now we know about the sunset alignment, everything's that way, back over there. The sunrise is that way and I noticed standing here that if we look round, if you come round here, if you look at the great trilithon, which is or the, it's the, the tallest trilithon, the one with the novel on, the back of it is directly in line with us and actually with this um, station stone. That line is where the sun would be rising. If the sun was rising, it would be directly in line with that. Um, we know from Hawley's uh, excavations that that trilithon was in that line. Okay. So we know that's in the original position, even though it's been redone. Oh, 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 so far, right? 
and um, <laughs> solstice time. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this trilithon aligning to the, the sunrise is it's 10 degrees out from where you'd expect it to be if you were symmetrical. So sunset and then it comes across the line of the sunset at 80 degrees. It's not at 90 degrees across the sunrise sunset line. Interestingly, the altar stone, which we can't see, which is there, is exactly parallel with that, as are two blue stone pillars in front of it. So if you imagine it when it was all standing up, like the end of a church, the whole back wall, the two blue stones and the altar were all skewed. And they're skewed about a metre out, so it's very recognisable. You'd have seen it, you'd have thought, wow, this is a huge mistake. No, it was on purpose. Skewed at 80 degrees, and that 80 degrees is the sun rise alignment for the winter solstice oh. so um, they were very clever they were, got the stones to do the sunset and the sunrise and the other tiny little thing about this 80 degree angle is that's the same angle as we see in the bush barrow lozenge and other decorative items Okay, so the, so the bush barrow lozenge may have in fact been, you know, as Simon's told me about this before, it's actually used for different measuring all the whole year really now. It could well be, yes. So it's not just the, solstice, not the summer solstice, it's also potentially the whole year. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So we've got the, uh, over there we have the bush barrow, <laughs> which is, you can virtually see it from here. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the four station stones. And one of these is missing, isn't it? Oh, uh, two of them are missing. Two of them are missing. So the station stone, there's another one down there. And they're in line with the winter solstice sunset that way, and then that way is uh, the lunar alignment, which Simon will have told you. About. And is there? I mean, because it's the winter solstice sunset and the summer solstice sunrise are the same alignment. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on it? Do you think they were both being marked, or do you think one was more prominent than the other? I think it was uh, the winter one. I mean, just out of that is because this alignment through here is the win win winter solstice sunrise. It's also the summer solstice sunset okay so when you come here in the summer which I've done for the the open access in the evening get behind the big stone and you'll see the Sun setting in line with it okay so it's all uh, it's, this is like the yeah. prime position yeah. and everything I mean is, do you think this is the reason they chose this particular spot geodetically you know, this was like which is a sort of important point in the landscape on the latitude or the longitude I, I I'm not sure what latitude longitude I this it's the big question. I mean, it, if I could go back, the one thing I'd say, why here? And they'd say, oh, it's obvious because, and we go, hands all of that. Um, I do quite like the periglacial stripes and maybe the heelstone there, all aligning. Um, if you've ever been to Grimes Graves up in Norfolk, have you seen the periglacial stripes showing up in the, the landscape? No, I have not. No, right. Grimes Graves, across the valley, there's a bank, you, you see photos of it, and the vegetation grows in stripes. It's quite extraordinary, it looks like it's been ploughed, and it's completely natural where the periglacial stripes there are. They're not in alignment with anything here, so if we had that sort of vegetation changes here, it would have been like, wow, look, we've got lines growing, we've got a big stone, it lines up with our most important day. Yeah, this is a special place. So they were like picking it, could have potentially picking it because it's partly to do with the way nature is guiding them here. Yeah, I think I, I, that's my feeling, it, and it's only a, a possibility, but there's got to be a re there has to be a reason here, and that's the, the best one I've heard so far. Well, thank you very much, Tim Dorr. My pleasure.